everybody! In today's video, we will be going over main parts that compose a fountain pen to give you a better understanding of how they work and what they are. Starting from the writing end to the rear end of the pen, we will make our way through the different parts that compose a fountain pen. Alright, the first part we'll be focusing on is the nib of the fountain pen, which is the part that brings uh, ink to paper, essentially. So, uh, nibs are usually made of different materials. For example, this Trisbee Eco is made out of steel, but some can also be made out of gold or titanium and other kinds of materials. Uh, so the first part that we'll be focusing on on this nib is the tipping material, which is essentially the small dot right at the top here. Let me just focus. There you go. Um, now this tipping material is usually um, a piece of wear resistant and hard metal alloy that is welded onto the tip of the pen, onto the tip of the nib, sorry, and uh, that is usually ground to a specific nib size. Now nib sizes on a standard level range from extra fine to fine to medium and broad. The next part we'll be focusing on are, are the tines, which are uh, either parts on the sides of the slit, which uh, the slit is the thin line that you see right there, and this slit helps the ink from the feed um, move through to the tip of the pen. Now. On top of that slit, we have what you call the breather hole, which is basically where the ink will come, th uh, the air will come through, sorry, um, into the feed, and then this will allow for a better and regular ink flow. Next, we have the shoulders of the nib, which are basically the widest parts of the nib on either side, and finally, we have the imprints as you can see here. So the details that are engraved on the nib, um, and these details are usually either about the nib size or even the brand, and imprints can also be laser etched and uh, impressed onto the nib. Something I almost forgot to mention is that all of this here was set in relation to a normal nib, like this Trisbee nib, so meaning like a fully exposed nib. Um, but there's also something that we call hooded nibs, like the nib that you find on the Lamy 2000. And in this case, uh, most of the nib is not exposed. Up next, we have the feet of the fountain pen. Now, here I have a Lamy Safari nib, and then you can see on the back here, this black part is essentially the feed. I have a complete one out for you so that it's easier to explain. Right over here. So the feed is essentially the part of the fountain pen that connects uh, the nib of the pen to the ink reservoir. Uh, so it's made up of little slits, uh, as you can see on the side here. Um, and this, uh, these slits will allow for the ink to flow when writing, but it also helps air to come up through the feed and toward the ink reservoir. So the air in the feed will allow for a regular ink flow. Next, we have the grip section. As you may have guessed, this is the place where you actually hold onto the pen. On this Lamy Safari, the grip is triangular. As you can see, there are two faces in here and a rounded face on the bottom. Even if this is not a perfect triangle, this is referred as a triangular grip section. Most common grips, though, are circular. For example, we have this Caveco Sport in red, where the grip section is circular and concave. As you can see here, this is a circle and the grip is really has a concave shape to it. You also have circular convex grips for example, on this Lamy accent, you can see that it is also circular, but it is convex, you know, more like a bubble. So these are the three main shapes of grips. You also have circular straight, for example, on this, uh, on this uh, sorry, Twisby Echo, you see it is circular and it is just straight. There's no concave or convex shape to it. Uh, the best type of grip really depends on how and where you hold onto your pens. Myself, I prefer the circular ones, but I know some people will prefer the triangular ones. Depending on the pen, the grip may be, might be made out of wood, 
plastic, acrylic, aquiline, brass, there's a whole range of materials. Next up, we have the barrel of the pen. The barrel, also known as the body of the pen, is the main part here just after the grip section. On this Lamy Safari, the barrel is made out of ABS plastic, but like the grip, it can be, it can be made out of several things, such as aluminum, or macaulay, or just any kind of plastic, even some metals like brass or silver. At least sky's the limit. On some pens, called demonstrator pens, the barrels are actually clear, like this Twisby Echo. You can see that this whole section is transparent, which allows us to see the inner workings of the pen. So this is called the demonstrator fountain pen. Other pens have an opaque body. Next up is the ink reservoir. There are several types of ways to hold ink into a fountain pen. The first one we're going to discuss is the cartridge. For example, a cartridge is used in this Lamy Safari. These types of pens, and many others, use cartridges, just like this one. It's simply a plastic tank filled with ink, and you can either buy them new and use them, or refill the old ones, which, is, which allows you to choose from a wide selection of bottle inked. The, normally, the cartridge pens also accept converters, which are plastic uh, pistons that are operated by this piston knob and when you turn it the piston moves back and forth in the cylinder absorbing the ink or pushing it out. Every brand that allows for cartridges and converters has their own shape. For example, this is a Lamy Safari so it uses a Lamy T10 cartridge and then you have this converter that only works with Lamy. Different pen brands that have cartridges have their own ink cartridge, except for a couple of brands that use international cartridges. They have international short and long, and they, these work in a wide variety of pens. So this was for cartridges and converters. Now let's move on to piston fillers. So on a, on a piston filler pen, like this Twisby Echo, the ink, it's like a giant converter if you want. So you have the cylinder, the piston inside, you have the piston up here, and you turn it to move the piston back and forth in the barrel, and this absorbs ink, or it pushes it out in the bottle. So this is a second option for the carrying ink in your fountain pen. And finally you have a third option, which is less common, and normally it's like people do it to their pens, but it's not the recommended, uh, the manufacturer's recommended way of filling it. So this is called eye-dropping a pen. It works on plastic pens mostly, for example, this Caveco Sport. The way it works is people, they disassemble the pen, they unscrew the grip section from the barrel, then they apply silicone grease to the treads here to improve the water tightness, and they actually fill the whole body of the pen with ink. So this allows you to have a, a huge ink capacity in the pen, but some people, like myself, Find it a bit risky, just in case there's a leak, you have a massive leak, and maybe you can crack the barrel and you have a massive leak again. So these are the three main types. You have eye droppers, you have piston fillers, and you have cartridge converter pens. There are also some other types of uh, ink filling systems, like vacuum and others, but these are the, the, the main ones, let's say. Next up, we have the finial of the pen. The finial is actually the end of the pen. So both the end of the cap and the end of the barrel are called finials. Caps are often decorated, like on this Caveco Sport, it has the brand, like in a metal medallion that is inserted in the cap. Yeah, I have a similar thing on the Twisby Echo, where you have, again, the brand is inserted on the top of the cap finial. On other pens, is the other way around. For example, on this Lamy 2000, the cap finial is actually pretty plain, but on the other side, you have this small decoration. So the finials really refer to both ends of the fountain pen. Next, we have the cap of the pen. 
Now, of course, I know you know what a cap is, right? It's simply this plastic part that either snaps onto the pen or threads onto the pen to protect the nib and prevents the ink from drying out. I just wanted to let you know that some cotton pens, like this Pilot Vanishing Point in matte black, has actually no cap. It's a capless pen. To open, to open it, you push onto this button here, this deploys the nib, and to retract it, you do the same thing again. There's a small hinged door in the front of the pen that opens and closes with the nib, and it allows the ink to remain um, moist at all times. But it doesn't have a cap, as a regular cap like these, right? This is a capless pen. Finally, we have the clip. The clip is used to clip your pens to your pockets, either your pants pockets or your shirt pockets or maybe a notebook. So for example, on this Lamy Safari, the clip is simply a folded piece of wire. It can also have this kind of form, you know, like on this Twist Echo, it's a pressed piece of steel. They both serve the same purpose. And the clips are often on the caps, except on pens that have no cap. Like for example, this capless vanishing point, right? Since it doesn't have a cap, the clip is actually fixed to the grip section. Some pens have what are, what are called hinged clips, like this Lani 2000. So instead of the clip's material bending to allow the movement, right? What you have is a solid clip. In this case, it's stainless steel. And there's a small spring-loaded hinge here. So it allows you to operate the clip without bending the material. These, type of, these types of clips are often found on uh, more expensive fountain pens. But it's not the case, you know, Pelican and Aurora don't, don't have these, so it's not the universal rule. And finally, you have some fountain pens that don't have a clip at all, like this Caveco Sport. When you first buy it, there's no clip. Well, you can purchase one afterwards, and it fits, it slides onto the cap. But when you buy it, there's no clip. One of the reasons there's no, there's no clip is that the octagonal shape of the cap actually allows it to not roll because th this is one of the uses for a clip. You know, if you have something very streamlined like a Lamy 2000 without a clip, it would easily roll off your desk, which can be very dangerous for your pen, of course. Although there are many more terms that we could have explored, we found these to be the essential terms that you'll likely come across. I definitely was not familiar with all of these terms when I started getting into the hobby, so having a reference to go to to better understand some of the key terms will hopefully be helpful to many of you. Like, subscribe, and thanks for watching!